you can move up, move up close or move back. And by moving closer and back on the uh, connect sensor, you'll actually get closer to the car. You can crouch down and walk up really close. You get right up on the details of the car. Can you do this sat down as well as stood up? Yes, you can. Uh, obviously, it's harder to move forward and back when you're sitting, but yes, you can do that as well. Now, the way we think about these cars is more like a level and a platform again. We want you to explore the car, move around the car, and really the word we use on the team is desire. We want people to want to stand up off the couch, move towards that car, and want to touch it, want to interact with the car. So the cars are highly interactive. You can reach down, open up the door by using your hand. In fact, the cars we chose were cars that are very interesting. Our goal is not to choose cars you know. Our goal is actually, I hope that we're choosing a lot of cars that most people don't know. But the cars are so interesting, so rare, so crazy, that you want to get up and interact with each one. So a car like this is very interactive. It opens all over the place. It has those very emotive gullwing doors that harken back to the old 300 SL. When we started looking at this, our approach, we, we had to take a new approach than what had been really used in the past. If you think about most of the games that we, we all play today as core gamers, they're epic, expansive experiences. You're supposed to sit back and see, you know, New York is burning and there's missiles falling from the sky and you take it all in, right? But the moment you walk up to a wall, it's pixelated and it's, the bump mapping falls apart and you look at a garbage can and it's kind of octagonal. And you're not supposed to get up close. This is exactly the opposite. This is about getting right up in that car. And we want it to never fall apart. That meant looking at shaders and lighting in a totally new way. We wanted to get to that sub, you know, sub meter level of detail. The 6.3 liter naturally aspirated V8 engine produces 571 horsepower. This helps the car reach 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds and achieves a top speed of 197 miles per hour. Now all of this is fully loped. I'm playing the English version, but it's loped in full languages, including VO support. But what you were seeing there was the stipple on the plenum, uh, on top of the intake manifold. You're also seeing the carbon fiber. You're seeing all the detail in the latch. I mean, it's just an incredibly detailed model because you're getting so up close to the car. You're also seeing our new lighting model. We wanted to approach lighting in a new way. So we actually worked with some guys we hired from Pixar, as well as from Hollywood and built a new lighting engine that's based on a technique called IBL, image-based lighting. Now, in most games, including Forza 3, the object has one set of lighting instructions and the environment has another set of lighting instructions. So the math is different. We tune them so they look as close as we can, but they are different math. With IBL, the car is lit by the environment, so you get all that complex bounce lighting off the floor or the green from the tree, and it's not just the reflection. It's actually the lighting. Now, that's all technical side, but really what all it comes down to is the car looks seated. It looks perfect in the environment. Now, we did all of this to support Auto Vista, which was to support Connect. But once we did all this work, it made its way into the rest of the game. So IBL is in the normal racing. These new, uh, we have new shaders for leather. We have new shaders for carbon fiber. All the cockpits look so much better now because of all the work that we had to learn about in order to deliver this model. So you could say the Connect has improved Forza as a, as a, as a core game. It has, okay. absolutely. The graphics, I mean, I never thought I would have been saying this, but the graphics are better in Forza 4 because of the Connect. Because it forced us to rethink some old problems. Just, you know, we all deal with, but we've all been doing them one way as an industry. And we had to think of them in a new way. Now, of course, you have a connect, you can reach out, start the car. As I mentioned, each one of the cars was chosen based on how they fit together as an overall tapestry. So, what I'm really hoping is that people that 
don't necessarily know cars find these very interesting. And part of that was not just having technical information like I showed on the engine, but actually getting more humor involved. So we got into a creative partnership with Top Gear. I don't know if all of you know Top Gear. It's a show out of the UK. It's a kind of an entertainment variety show around cars. Very opinionated about cars. And it really works like a play-by-play -play and a color commentary. We deliver the facts. But Jeremy Clarkson from Top Gear delivers more of the interesting anecdotes. This is not just the greatest car Mercedes makes. Right now, I think it's the greatest car in the world.